All right, good afternoon, everyone. Just so you know, <clears throat> evidently this morning while I was giving the lecture, my internet connection completely dropped. So I believe that the first lecture I did where I spent an hour going over hands-on test four that you took last week, I think that that stayed. But for some reason, when I checked the three-hour lecture that I did this morning after that, everything was gone. So with that said, I'm going to re-lecture right now. Not exactly what I'd had planned for my afternoon. All right. So today is day 23, Monday, the 26th of June, 2023. The class is online, AWD 1100, C-sharp programming. <clears throat> so I did go over the hot test. I'll put that out there in just a little bit. As it says, this will be a private video. So I'm going to continue on with part two in our study of object-oriented programming concepts. We're going to write a program. It'll actually be fairly simple, and I'm going, I'm going to write it in three ways. So you can compare and contrast different ways that you can do things. This video that I'm doing right now will be public. Tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm going to lecture on Chapter 12 of Muroc. Again, I'm going to take my time doing that. On Wednesday, we're going to take a look at the homework and lab problems for Chapter 12. Of course, as always, you'll be responsible for the written test for Chapter 12. There is only one lab problem, and there is only one homework problem. We'll talk about those in a little bit. On Thursday, the plan right now is to give you a pretest for chapter 12. As always, I'll have that pretest emailed to you by 7 a.m. <clears throat> and then I will go over it between 8 and about 8.15 a.m. And then you'll have a couple hours to work on it. And then around 10.15, I'll do the pretest for you with you from scratch. All right. As far as next week goes, there is no class on Monday, July 3rd. Our president has said that since July 4th this year is on a Tuesday, that um, we would give you a longer weekend. So you will have off both Monday, July 3rd and Tuesday, July 4th. So in other words, after Thursday's class this week, you will have a five-day weekend, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. When you come back then on Wednesday, the 5th of July, that's when we'll take hot number five, the hands-on test for Chapter 12. All right? And then Thursday, we'll just going to be going on into probably at least Chapters 13 and 14. Okay. <clears throat> if you have not yet turned in your Chapters 9 through 11 written tests and homework, that was due last Wednesday. Please make sure you get it in as soon as possible. I have graded the hot number four tests. They are out. The grades are out on Inside Rankin. I will try to send you an email out either tonight or tomorrow with a test page on it so you can see where I took off points if you lost any points. All right. Okay, so with that said then, I'm just going to start. And like I said, this is, this, this I could be happier. How's that? All right. I'm going to make a new folder here that I'm going to call Baseball Oop. Okay. <clears throat> I'm replicating again what I did this morning. All right. So first thing I'm going to do is close down anything else that I have running in Visual Studio. All right. So that's all done. And I'm going to start up a new project. And uh, it will be, I'm going to do three of them right now. They're all going to be similar again. The first one, it will be a Windows Forms app. In fact, all three will. And I'm going to call this Oop Baseball 01. All right. And I'm going to put it in the folder that is called Baseball Oop that I just made. So the project name is Oop Baseball 01, and that's the project name. And the solution, we'll just call this 
more oop how's that okay now we're going to have the same interface on all three of these it's going to be fairly simplistic just so you know what do i mean well i'm going to take the size here i'm going to make this a square so i'm going to make it 816 by 816 so it's going to be pretty big as you can see okay if i can knock that down so you can see that's how big this is going to be all right let's do what we always do when we begin and that is let's rename the form <clears throat> so i'm going to say frm baseball zero one okay so that's done let's go to the form itself and let's change the background color we'll make it kind of that orangish all right <clears throat> I'm going to put some text in there instead of form one. It's going to say AWD 1100, chapter 12, OOP, baseball, example number one. Okay, I'm going to copy that, just throw it in here. So later I'll be able to make number two and number three. Okay. All right. <clears throat> then, like I said, a very simple interface. There will be three buttons. And there will be a big label. I'm sure this label is going to end up being bigger than I need it to be, but that's okay. We'll put that, uh, we'll make that writing in white because it'll look a little nicer, I think. All right. So that'll be my interface. Lock that into place and let's also change the size on everything in here. All right, and I don't want there to be anything in the label right now. So I'm gonna remove the text that's currently in there Okay, this one I'm going to call BTN Instantiate. And it will have the word Instantiate on it. The second one will be, oops, I guess it had to be a little wider, didn't it? Great. Ah! Okay, I think that'll work. That looks good enough, I guess. So, BTN instantiate with the word instantiate in there. BTN clear with the word clear. And B 
btn exit with the word exit. This I'm just going to call LBL statistics. And again, there's no text in there. Okay, there's that. So my interface is now done. Let me double click on here and on here and on here. Now for the clear button, there's only one line, LBL statistics.txt equals double quote, double quote. I mean, there's nothing there really. All right. Um, for the exit, let's just do our exit program or not. And I'll put that down here. I'm just going to copy that over from an earlier iteration of this. So, So all that is done. <clears throat> so right now I should be able to, well, let's see what else. All right. Did we set our, the accept button will be, BTN instantiate. The cancel button will be BTN clear. The start position will be center screen. And let's quickly set up a tab order as 0, 1, 2, 3. So if we bring this up, we should be able to run it now. The only thing that will work, of course, will be the exit button. Okay, so there's that's there's that. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to create a class, and I'll just call it what it is. All right, it's going to be a class of baseball players. So let's make a class and call it baseball player. All right, so over here. Add, I'm going to go down to the bottom and choose class and type in here baseball. I'll try that again. Baseball player.cs. There that is. We're only going to need system and we probably don't even really need that. One thing to get used to is when you're doing this, replace the word internal with the word public. If you say why, we're going to get into all that tomorrow. Okay. All right, when you create a new baseball player, what we're going to do back in this file that we've been working with in the instantiate, we're going to do something that's going to look like this. I'm going to put it down here because I'm going to get rid of it right away. But we're going to say something like baseball player, player one equals new baseball player. All right, then we're going to do it again. I used famous St. Louis Cardinal players. So then we're going to do this and I'm going to say Albert Pujols. All right. And then we're going to do it one more time. We're going to have three of these constructors, so I'm going to have three different players. This one will be Stan Musial. All 
All right. So what is that junk I put down at the bottom? Again, that's all code that is going to go into the other file. In fact, let's just put it into the other file. I'm going to keep it in there for now as comments. Now, this is my instantiate, so I'm going to call this create or update a ball player. Okay, and right down below this, we're going to write this private void create or update a ball player. And I'm going to paste that in again. When we click the button that's going to create or update a ball player, we can create a new ball player like this. So we're passing in nothing. What that's going to mean, and you're going to see it in just a minute, what that's going to mean is that we're going to be able to basically have a ball player set up that has no first name, no last name, no position. Home runs and average will both be set to zero. Then we'll create another ball player where we give them a first name and a last name. But since we don't give them a position, that'll default to the empty string. Since we don't give them a home run, any home runs, that'll default to zero. And since we don't give them any average, that'll default to zero. Finally, we'll put in one last player where we're going to put in all five fields. So what these are is right there, I'm going to attempt to create three different baseball players. And to do that, I'm going to use three different constructors. A constructor is what is called when you attempt to create or instantiate an object based off of a class. We want to create baseball players based off of a baseball player class. We're going to call them player one, player two, and player three. When we create the first one, we're not putting anything in the parentheses. So again, their first name is going to be the empty string. Their last name is going to be the empty string. Their position is going to be the empty string because those are all strings. The number of career home runs they have will be zero. Their career batting average will also be zero. So in other words, it'll hit all the default values. In the second example, there will be a first name and a last name. The first name will be Albert. The last name will be Pujols. But since we don't have a position or a home runs or an average, the position will default to the empty string. Home runs will default to zero. Average will default to zero. Lastly, when we create our third ball player, player three, that'll be Stan Musial. And since we have his first name, last name, position, home runs, and lifetime average, those will all be set already. All right, so how do we do this? I mean, what, what is this doing? Well, I'm going to have to create three constructors, one that takes nothing, one that takes a couple strings, and one that takes three strings, an integer, and a decimal. So let's do that first. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create what's typically called an empty constructor. It's also known as a default constructor. And when you create a constructor, it's the same name as the class itself, but you don't put class there. You just put public. Try it again, not publisher. Public followed by the name, which is baseball player. All right. And technically, this is what happens. All right. There's no code in there. But I'm going to put in what's going to happen as comments. Even if you don't put these in, this will be done for us. So this, whoops, try that again. This will set the values below to the following. All right. So what will be called underscore player first name will be set to the empty string. 
all right now where I say the values below all right let's move this over a little these values below are are more often known as instance variables because every time we create a new instance of a ball player so the first name will be set to the empty string let's just put this in here the last name will also be set to the empty string the position will be set to the empty string the number of home runs that they have will be set to zero because that's a numeric field so is the average so that'll be set to 0 0.000 m so when we create a brand new baseball player and we put nothing in those parentheses this is the values that that baseball player will have all right so that'll be that's that's the first constructor now again it's called empty because even though this stuff happens all right those are just comments the system does all that by default hence the name default constructor so let's make a second constructor and we call this an overloaded constructor why because what's in the parens is different so again public baseball player but now we're going to have a string for the first name and we're going to have a string for the last name all right your okay i'm going to copy this in and then modify it so Now we're getting errors they're going to be going away in just a minute i can tell you why we're getting the errors too all right we're attempting to access some variables here we haven't created yet we can create them up above or down below in this case let's create them up above let's put them at, at the top here so i'm going to say private string underscore let's just call it first name private string underscore last name private string underscore position private int underscore home runs private decimal underscore average okay these things that I just created right here, they're referred to as oops, instance variables. Because each time I create a new baseball player, this baseball player will have their own first name, their own last name, their own position, their own home runs, and their own average. Is it possible to have two players? that are both play baseball that have the same first name and last name sure we're not worried about it so now that i put these in notice ah, doesn't it, I, oh mm, that's got to go down here I was wrong, so let's see. Okay. So let's see if we can figure out what the problem was here. Okay. All right. I should just call it first name and last name. There you go. Whoops. There. All right. 
So in the first case, we pass in nothing, so everything gets set to its default values. In the second case, we pass in a first name and a last name, so those are set, and the other three, three fields, and I don't know how, but I lost one of them, the other three fields will be set again to their default values. All right, I did cut this down a little, so let's just call it first name, last name, position, home runs, and average. That'll give me, that'll give me less to type. Okay. All right, so that's done. Again, let me move the word player there. And there, and there. All right. Okay, everything's working right now. Let's have one more overloaded constructor that has everything. Okay. All right, so this is overloaded constructor number one. And this will be overloaded constructor number two. This needs a first name. It needs a last name. It also needs a string for the position. An int for the home runs. And a decimal for the average. All right. So those are my overloaded constructors. This is the default one. So if you call it with nothing, this is the one you'll get if you pass it in two strings. And this is the one you'll get if you pass it in three strings, an int, and a decimal value. All right. Now, these things up here, like I said, these are also known as instance variables or in other words they're the data for the program sometimes they co they're called attributes it doesn't really matter all right so when i write this first one here it's going to be written a lot like you would write it if you were using a language like um like java so why would i show you that because this is not a java class well it works for c sharp as well and if you ever had anybody who was converting over from a Java programmer to a C-sharp programmer, it's not inconceivable that you could see something like this out in the field. All right? So let's write these. And I'm going to write what are called getters and setters. And getters are also known as accessors. And accessors are basically read only and when we get done with our getters we're going to go in and we're going to write our setters and there's those are also known as mutators so let's write them and then we'll, we'll talk about them they all have the same kind of format so you put the word public for a getter then the type of variable it's going to return which is a string and then like get first name and you just say return underscore first name that's the whole thing so we're going to write five of these now i'll get errors because i'll have to change them so this will be last name This will be position.
and then we will have home runs and average. Now, when I do home runs, okay, and I put home runs in here, I'm going to get an error. And that's because it doesn't expect to me to be returning a string. It expects an int return. Notice now the error is gone. I'm also going to have in here a get average. This will say average, but I'm going to run into the same situation. In other words, it's expecting this to be a decimal. So those are my five getters. We're going to write the setters in just a minute. But again, getters are also known as accessors. They're read-only. So the idea behind them is they're supposed to provide data for you. It's kind of like if we were in class and in a regular classroom and I said, who knows the answer to this question, whatever question I just gave you, and you raised your hand. All right? So if I said, what is 7 plus 3, and you raise your hand and you go, it's 10. Good. You're not setting that answer. You're getting that answer and giving it to me. If I said, what's 7 plus 3, and you say 12, and I say, no, it's not 12. It's 10. Now I'm setting it. So when you do a getter, public, the return type, in this case, we're writing get followed by the name of our instance variable, and then we're just returning it. That's it. All right, so let me write the five setters. Now, setters don't return anything. So this will be void, and it'll have the word set here. All right, and I'll have to pass in something. How about a string? That's called F N for first name. So now I can say first name equals F N, just like that. So let me copy this down and put in whoops, put in five of these. All right. Now I'm gonna get errors until I change these names. That'll be L A. That'll be last name. This will be set position. We just use P. All right, we've got two more to go. We want our home runs, not homework, home runs, and that'll be an int. We'll just call it HR. And finally, we'll have average. online there and just one equal sign there that's it so what we have in here are both getters and setters getters are accessors they display something return something setters are mutators they allow you to change something all right so that's it for this first class so let's jump back into our regular program. All right. We've already got 
our clear done. We've got our exit done. We've got a show message in here. That's all fine and dandy. All right, so let's go in and let's write our instantiate. Okay. So when we click the instantiate button, it's going to call create or update a ball player. So let's undo these one at a time. First, let's undo this one. See if we get an error. We shouldn't. And we don't. So notice if I come in here now and I do this. I'm going to do a show message. And I'm going to put, okay, um, name. Player one dot get name. A blank space. Player one Okay, and this was wrong. This should have been first name, not last name. My fault. So there's the first name, get first first name and last name. Okay, that's all fine. Then on the next line, we're going to have Um, position and then on the next line we're going to have home runs And let's see, we'll want these on their own lines, so. All right, I'm just going to pretty this up a little so it's easier for all of us to read. And for our get home runs, let's put a, let's put a two string on that also. Home runs, get home runs. I don't know why I've got that in there twice, but I do. So again, this will be a dot two string. All right. Finally, I'm going to put in here player one stats now i want you to understand this this is maybe with you know with what we've been doing in here this is one of the most important things we've done so far all right taking it from the top then in this routine here we are going to instantiate a new baseball player called player one using the default constructor. All right. So if we did this right, and I'm going to run it in just a moment. If we did this right, it should say name like this. That should be empty, a blank space, and that should be empty. So it should, all you should see in here is name, then position, and that should be empty, then home runs, and that should be zero, then average, and that should be 0, 0.000. 
So, you know, that's what I think is going to happen. So let's try it and see if indeed that is what's going to happen. All right. So file, save all. And we've got name with nothing, position with nothing, home runs with zero, and average with 0, 0.000. That, believe it or not, is perfect. It's exactly what we want. All right. Now, let's fill this player up. So I'm going to say here, player one dot set first name. When we're going to make this Lou Brock, who was a famous ball player, 60s or something in the 70s. I don't know, probably the 60s. Whoops, I don't know what happened there. That's interesting. All right. Set position, and it looks like I spelled position wrong. That's better. And his position was he was an outfielder. He had 149 career home runs. And his average was 0.293M. And actually, that's a number. So we don't want it in quotes. Now, how do we know whether or not this worked? All right. Well, there's two ways. First of all, we can come in here. We could do a message box or a show message. We've already got that here. But let's also put in something here. So I'm going to add another variable here. We'll call it string output str. You've seen me do this plenty of times. All right. And now I'm going to say output str plus equal and I'm going to steal all this stuff and kind of play with it a little bit to make it look the way I want it to look don't worry if we got errors if we do we'll fix them right away name position home runs average we got everything in here good so that's all done and then I'm going to say LBL statistics.txt equals the output string. So let's see if this works. All right. So we're, we're getting blank stuff, then we're setting it, and we should be getting full stuff. So let's look. Okay, they're all blank. Now I've reset it. Oh, I didn't print it out there, but... Lou Brock, outfielder, home runs, and average. Good. Clear works. And right here, why didn't that second... Oh, I didn't do another show message. So I could grab that same show message. Okay. And now, nothing... There's everybody, and the same thing will now be shown here. There we go. So there's our first guy. All right. Let's just copy. All right, and I'm going to put it right here. right before that output string. So I copied everything in. 
Don't worry, we'll fix it all right now if we've got any errors. But now we want player two. And we will give him a name, Albert Pujols. Okay. And now we're going to print out now what we should get in here. This has all got to be player two. So now what it should say, and I'm not going to use these, so I'm not going to use this or this. But this is going to be player two, as is that as is that, and Pujols played first base. He had 703 home runs, not 7,903. And his batting average was 296. <clears throat> so these will have to all be going back to twos, player two. Okay, and now we're going to add on to this thing that we've got here. <clears throat> so this will be a plus, hit enter, and I'm going to just grab everything I had up here and copy it down. <clears throat> the only thing that will change here is all these player ones will now become player twos. Let's put a couple blank lines before that and run it and see if it works. Okay, there was the first one. Empty constructor. Then we filled it in by using five set statements. One, two, three, four, five. Then we had this for our second constructor. I put Albert Brock in there. Isn't that good? I didn't change that one. And there's nothing. When I do it again, that's all set. Now notice it is poo holes. All right. And now I've got my first two guys in here. All right. I'll have to fix these. That's not a biggie. We'll fix them all right away. So this is, these should be one. These should all be two. And that backslash n twice should be there and not here. Try it like that. All right. So let's look. Still is wrong there. So there's our first two guys. This, again, was a blank baseball player that we instantiated then used a set first name a set last name a set position a set home runs and a set average all right because that used the default constructor this used our first overloaded constructor all right and we we provided the first and last name and then we called set position set home runs set average now i gotta change one thing up here let's see that should have been a two here okay now you can pretty this up all you want to or need to do to make it look nicer i don't know if that helps with people, you know, to line stuff up. I like to do it because I think it does help. Not everybody agrees with that.
So again, when we run this particular program, what's going to happen here, taking it from the top, is no, there's nothing new in the clear. That's just going to grab that whole label and clear it out. There's nothing new in exit. That's what we've been doing all semester. So nothing new in there. So it's all the new stuff is in the instantiate. All right. So when we click the instantiate button, we call create or update a ball player. And that's right here. So we make this output string, and that's what we're going to use to write the label up with. And notice we're instantiating three different baseball players. The first one that we're instantiating is going to call the default constructor. So in other words, this is what is setting the first name to the empty string, the last name to the empty string, the position to the empty string, home runs to zero, and average to 0.000m. All right. Then we go and we fill up player one using the programmer created set methods. All right, so we use a set first name, set their first name to Lou, set last name, and set their last name to Brock, set position, and set their position to outfield, set their home runs to 149, and set their average to 293. Okay, we also do a show message before we set anything and a show message after we set. So again, what that is showing us There's before and there's after. Okay, and we've got all that. All right, then we come in and we instantiate a second baseball player. Unlike the first baseball player, who when we instantiated and we passed nothing in, now we're passing in two strings. One string representing the first name of Albert, one string representing the last name of Pujols. All right, then we're printing out their first name and their last name. They've already been set. But the position should be empty, home run should be zero, and average should be 0.000M. Then we manually go in and set his position to first base, set his home runs to 703, set his average to 296, and we print it out again. So again, this was our original blank constructor. Then we filled it in using set methods. Then this was our original first overloaded constructor. We've got a first name and a last name, and the other three variables that are in there will default to the default values of nothing for position, zero for home runs, and 0, 0.000 for average. All right, and there's the after picture. And there's our first two. So that's working great, no problem there. So let's do the last one. With this last one that's in here, okay, so I guess I already had done that one. With the last one, we are going to call with everything. And that's got to be in double quotes because it's a string. And then we're going to do the same thing. So I'm going to grab this. Not that. Grab that show message. And put it down here. But again, this will have to be player three. Not player 32, but player three. All right. And that'll be player three stats. And then we're going to again 
I just keep moving this down. That's all I'm doing here. Okay. So look where I've got this name and all this other stuff here. Let me do it one more time. So we'll have to put another plus sign there. That's why I got the error. All right, but now there was player one stuff. There's player two stuff. Now we need player three. Okay, let's pretty this up just a little bit here. All right, let's see if it works. So there's the first one. That's the empty constructor. So those are the default values. Then we filled in with sets. All right, then we've got where we filled in the first and last name, and we used defaults for <clears throat> position, home runs, and average. And then we added those three in using sets. Then we had everybody from the get-go. And OK. And there's our three guys. Now, looks like Stan Musial, the home runs and average aren't correct. Let's fix those right now. All right. See if we can figure it out. Four seventy-five. Thirteen. That looks okay. here for something that looks wrong so I wanted to do something here okay but I thought that when we ran all this yeah it's wrong here already home runs are wrong and average is wrong okay so let's fix that Whoa. 
it's because I set that to zero here, and it should have been set to home runs. And average was set to zero, and that should have been set to average. Now let's look at it. There they are. All right. So that's our first set, whatever you want to call it. Those are our first numbers. All right. And again, when we did this, we did this more along the lines of the way that you would do this in a language like Java. All right. Okay. So that's the first of three. So let's come in here. Do a file, save all. Now, in just a minute, we're going to create our second one. Okay, so let me close this. Right mouse click on here. Add new project. It will again be a Windows Forms app. <clears throat> and this one will be called Oop Baseball 02. There that is. Again, I'm going to make that 816. I am going to change the name of my form. The last one was FRM Baseball 01. This one is going to be FRM Baseball 02. Yes, I want to change it all over. I want to grab this, put that in there for my form text. So let's go back. Don't need that open. We have changed the name. Good. Let's change the color. The first one we just did was kind of reddish. This will be orange. All right. We will again, let's, while we're here, let's set our start position to center screen. And we'll set the text to EWD 1100, Chapter 12, Oop Baseball Example Number 2. And then I'm going to cheat a little bit. You can do this, but please watch. I'm going to go back to my original interface here. I'm going to do a Control A, which will highlight all or choose all of it. Control C to copy. Then I will go and paste it in here. That's totally fine to do that. When you do that, there's a couple things to be leery of. I want to mention both of them to you. Okay. First, it'll automatically keep the names. BTN Instantiate, BTN Clear, BTN Exit, LBL Statistics. But you lose your Accept button and your Cancel button. So I'm going to reset my Accept button to BTN Instantiate. I'm going to reset my Cancel button to BTN Clear. I will again, I already have center screen there, that's good. And you must reset your tab order, so I want that to be 0, 1, 2, 3. Now is the most important part, though. Don't just copy the code over from the other, you know, the clear and the X, etc. You can, but make sure you open these first and put them in there because otherwise 
it makes copies and it put a little put it like in button exit click one button clear click one you don't want that so let's go back to the one we just had we don't need this anymore i don't think but we do need this so So I'm going to grab the clear code. It's just one line. It's not really buying me a whole heck of a lot. All right. Then I'm going to grab my exit program or not and my show message. All right, so that's all done. So I just have to do the instantiate. That isn't too bad. So let's first let's run it and see if it works. Set that as our startup project. All right. That all is working. We don't have anything in Instantiate yet, so we'll do that right now. Okay. We have to write this yet. We will write it. But the first thing I want to do here is I'm going to add a new baseball class. So I'm going to say add class. And again, just like before, we'll call it baseball player dot CS. And there it is. I'll immediately get rid of these. Change this to public. And just so you don't have to you don't have to watch me type a lot. I'm going to grab the last one that we had. And I'm going to copy all of this in. We're going to make a bunch of changes to it. But I'm going to grab all of it. So let's put that in here. There it is. Okay, now, from what we did last time, what can we use and what are we going to change? All right, as far as what we can use, there's a lot of it. We'll keep our instance variables. We'll keep this constructor. We'll keep this constructor. We'll keep this constructor. But we're going to get rid of all of our getters and all of our setters. So we keeping about half, not too bad. But now what we're going to use instead of getters and setters, we're going to use we're going to use what are typically referred to as all right, rather than getters and setters, we are going to use what are typically referred to as properties. All right, so I'm going to come in here and just put them in. Won't take too long. Public string first name get. Well, the IntelliSense is already clicking in for me, so I'll just use that. Now, let me put all five of them in. And then when we get done, we'll go over each one of them. All right, so taking it from the bottom, this will be a decimal. And this will be average. As will this. As will this. All right, then we've got an int. 
which was called Home Runs. We've got a string here called Position. And this will be called last name. So again, let's take a moment here and let's talk about what has changed and what is the same. All right. So from what we had before, we kept our five instance variables. We didn't change these a bit. They're all exactly as they were previously. No difference there. All right. We kept our empty constructor, which says if we create a new baseball player and don't pass anything in, the first name will be set to the empty string. The last name will be set to the empty string. The position will be set to the empty string. The home runs will be set to zero, and the average will be set to zero, zero as well. All right, then we overloaded the constructor, so we can call it by passing in two strings, one representing the player's first name, one representing the player's last name. The other three values, those being the position, the home runs, and the average, those will each be set to their default values, empty string 0 and 0 0.000m. Then we overloaded the constructor again, so we were passing in five parameters, a string for the first name, a string for the last name, a string for the position, a string for the home runs, and a decimal for average. All right, and then we set all those. All right, that was all the same. Nothing new from the previous program. What's new then is what comes here. We're using what are called properties. All right, and what this says is when you refer to first name, you're either going to get that instance variable called first name, or you're going to set that instance variable called first name to whatever value you pass in. And I'm going to do this for all five, even though it's redundant. So I want to make sure you're getting this. For the second one, and notice they're public, and notice the first three are strings, the, la the, sec or the, little, the fourth one is an int, the fifth one is a decimal, but they're all get followed by set. The get has got an equal sign after it with a greater than. In fact, all of them do. Those are called lambda, L-A-M-B-D-A operators. We'll talk about those when we get to chapter 19. But in the second example, we're saying go and get the value of last name, okay, which is an instance variable. Or set the val instance variable last name to whatever value you pass in. Then we do the same thing with position, where we either get the instance value called position, or we set the instance value position based on the value that gets passed in. Next, we get the number of home runs that are in that instance variable, or we set that to whatever value we passed in. And finally, we do the same thing again here. So there are some things that are the same. There are some things that are different from the way we did it originally. Okay? All right, so let me do a file save all here. And let me go back to here. All right? Now, I'm going to purposely put in a bunch of mistakes here. What I mean is, I'm going to go back to our first program, 
and I'm going to grab that instantiate code that's in there, all of it, and I'm going to copy it in. And I'm going to get loads of errors because the syntax has changed. So let me get rid of this and this. I can keep this. Keep that. Keep that. Now I'm going to put this in and hit enter. And you'll notice all the red over here and all the red over here. And that's because the way that you refer to this stuff syntactically has now changed. All right, so taking it from the top, this is where we wanted to print that stuff out. We no longer say player one dot get first name. We just say player or not. We don't. We no longer say player one dot get first name. We remove the dot. We remove the parentheses. We remove the. I should say the dot, the get, and the parentheses from each one of these. No more get. No more parentheses. No more get. No more parentheses. No more get. No more parentheses. All right. It's already looking much better than it did before. All right. Now, when we end up filling these up, it's the same kind of thing. Get rid of set for all of them. That's going to be a start. But instead of putting a number in there or a value in parentheses, we say equal followed by that value. So equal Lou, equal Brock, equal Outfield, equal 149, and equal why I do that and I've got I think I did the same thing over here so I don't know why I got that but average equal that so there's that fix let me fix this this average I guess it actually is okay all right then we do the same thing here in fact, we already did it up here. Let's just grab that. Put it in there. So those are all fixed. Then for our second one, we're going to be doing the same kind of thing. What do I mean? Get rid of get. Get rid of the parents. And all those errors are now gone. All right. Oops. And now we wanted to, again, no set. But this has got to be an equal sign. get rid of this and get rid of this and this and this just whoops just like that I'm going to grab one of these and I have to change all the ones to twos.
And since we've already put these in there, let's put them in here as well. Okay, so that's that one. All right. Finally, we've got our third one, which was Stan Musil. So we're doing the same thing. No more get. No more parens. And finally, we've got this big output string. And hopefully, at least, that's everything. And I don't know where I put that line. I might have must have removed it. LBO statistics. So instantiate, empty, all default values, filled up with Lubrock. Got a first name and a last name, the rest are default values, filled up with Albert Pujols. The last one has got everything, and there's my stuff. So as we take a quick look to review this one, all right, if we look at the class, there were no changes from lines 7 through 49. So about the first, about the first 50, line, 50 lines were the same, except this one said 02. Other than that, everything else was the same in there. What is new in this one are the properties. And these properties... are the words get and set inside a public string first name. So this is the property name. First name, last name, position, home runs, and average. Those are the property names. When you get one of the properties, you are just like we did before, you're returning the instance variable. When you set one of these properties, you are setting its value to whatever you passed into it. I don't know if I can really say much more about it than that. It 
and then as far as our program goes what changed was everywhere we had said the object like player one dot or player two dot or player three dot so anywhere where previously we had put in player one dot we had a set or a get after it we removed the word set or the word get before first name last name position hit or i'm sorry home runs and average we also got rid of the parens we're not calling a method anymore we're grabbing the property so we did that first we had our default constructor and we checked to make sure so this should be empty string space empty string empty string zero and zero then we filled it up and ran it again now it should say lou sorry lou brock position of home runs 149 average 0.293 m that's all player one stuff then we went in and did the same kind of thing for player two player two was where in player one we did not pass anything into the constructor it was the default constructor that got called in player two we passed in a first name and a last name and used the default values for the other fields those being excuse me position home runs and average okay so we showed a before and after picture in the before picture we had name albert pujols we had position with the empty string home runs with zero and average with 0, 0.000 then we filled in the particulars for mr pujols the fact that he worked first base had 703 home runs and an average of 296. <clears throat> okay. So then we printed Mr. Pujols after we had all of his stats in there. Then we instantiated our third player, which was Stan Musial. We gave him all five of the parameters, a first name of Stan, a last name of Musial, a position of first base slash outfield, a home runs of 475, and an average of 331M. And we printed those values out. All right. Finally, we came in here and we set this up. Our output string now had, again, information from all three individuals. We filled up an output string and then basically assigned that output string to our label. Clear was just that, clearing out that label. Exit was nothing new and we've got our old show message that we've been using. So again, with the file save all, I'm getting the same output that I got when I ran the uh, previous program. It looks the same. Empty, filled up with Lou Brock, Albert Pujols empty, filled up for Albert Pujols, filled up for Stan Musial, and there's our stuff. So that's the second one of the three. So let's quickly bring up the third one, or create the third one, I should say. So I'm going to leave these up there for a second, and come in here and create another project.
and it will be oop baseball 03. Again, I'm going to make this 816 by 816. All right, I'm going to change the name. I'm going to rename to FRM Baseball 03. Yes, I want to change it all over. I am going to grab that text for the form, which was right here. Now I can remove this because I don't need it any longer. There's the text for the form. All right. Let's change the color, background color of the form. We'll use yellow. And we don't have any buttons and center to set up yet, but we can change our start position to center screen. Then we'll go back to the old design that we had. Control A, Control C to copy. Control V to paste. Let's come in and change this. That color is not what I want. Okay, so it's going to be that yellow. And I can tell you right now the white doesn't look good on there. So I'm going to change the text back to black. Okay. Again, we've got BTN Instantiate. BTN clear, BTN exit, LBL statistics. So let's go on to here and do what we always do. That is, let's set the accept button to BTN instantiate. Let's set the cancel button to BTN clear. I believe we already set the start position. We did. Let's click on here. And let's set our tab order to 0, 1, 2, 3. All right, another view tab order to make those numbers go away. And finally, we'll double click on instantiate. We'll double click on clear. And we will double click on exit. As we did previously, Let's go and grab the exit code and show message. And we'll bring that in here. We will also do, just because it's only one line, LBL statistics.text equals double quote, double quote. Okay. Then in our instantiate, we're just going to grab, we're going to make changes, all right? But I'm going to grab this for inst our instantiate. I'm going to grab the whole thing, copy it to the clipboard, go back to here, and paste. Now, we're going to get errors because we haven't created the class yet. We'll do that right now, okay? So let's go back from our previous example and close that and close that we can save it's not i don't think it's going to matter but let's go to our baseball player class for the previous example let's copy all that no, not all of it i like to just do what the guts are so inside of the second set of curly braces so i'm going to grab all that all right i'm going to come into here right mouse click on my Baseball 03, do another add, do another class. Again, this will be baseballplayer.cs. Make, get rid of these. Make this public. Copy all that in. Okay, now what changes do we want to make in here? Well, if you are creating properties, these are going to be a special kind of property that are called auto, oops, 
try that again. Auto implemented properties. They're much simpler, in my humble opinion. They're much simpler than what we just looked at. What do I mean? Easiest way is to show you. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to type in get set right there and then get rid of the rest of this. And looky, looky, everything's gone. Now, there's one nice thing about using these auto-implemented properties with the word get and the word set. There's one good thing and one not so good thing. The good thing is we no longer need our instance variables. They pretty much come, even though they're kind of invisible, they pretty much come in here. Now, give me errors. We're going to fix those errors. Don't worry about it. Okay, how do we fix those errors? Everywhere it says first name, underscore first name, we replace it with the name of the auto-implemented property. Where it says last name, we do the same. Where it's got position, we do the same. Where it has home runs, we do the same, and where it has average, we do the same. So the good news right now, just so you know, the good news is this is now done. We didn't change, we removed our instance variables, but we did not change the default constructor. We did not change the first overloaded constructor. We did not change the second overloaded constructor. We did change our properties from kind of normal properties to what are called auto-implemented properties. Now, I told you there's a good thing and there's a bad thing about these. The good thing I've already shown you, we got rid of those instance variables. The bad news is if you want to do any validation in your get or your set i don't know why you'd ever do any in your get but you might in your set routine for instance if you want to check to see if first name is empty or not or position or if home runs is an integer etc if you want to go and do any validation you can't use auto implemented properties you have to use the regular properties that we used in the last one which mean the reg yeah which means that you have to bring in your instance variables so if this is a sket forget it set forget it you can use the auto implemented properties all right so let me again do a file save all on here let me get rid of this this was the last one all right let me go back to the last program that we had in fact did i do that already i don't know Yep, we've already got that. Now look, I don't think we have to change anything in here. We don't have any errors because we're using it the same way we did before. Player, the name of the object dot property, the name of the object dot property. Okay, so I can pretty this up. Give me about a minute or two. I just like to do this again because when I see stuff, it's kind of together like that. It makes it easier for me if somehow I've made a mistake someplace to see where I made my mistake. If you don't agree, then please, by all means, don't do it.
And that should be it. So let's run it, make sure it works, and then we'll go back and look at every bit of it again. Okay? Oh, I probably don't have that set as my start project. Nope, it's not the yellow one. So let's do that. It should look exactly the same as the other two did when we ran them. Nobody. All of Lou Brock's. Just the first and last name of Pujols. And then the defaults. Pujols filled in. Everything from usual. And our last, finally, our output. Clear works. Exit works. All right. So let's look one last time at the class and at the code and then we'll see what we're going where we're going next so we are again lines one through about 50 did not change in here one through 43 still have well i shouldn't say that we removed the instance variables that's why it's shorter we kept our empty or default constructor as is we kept overloaded constructor one as is we kept overloaded constructor two as is then we changed our regular properties to auto implemented properties all right that was it for the class as far as the code itself it was all in here And again, we set up player one. We called it with no parameters, so it gave us all our default stuff. Then we used this, which called our set routines to set all the stuff to Lou Brock, Outfield, 149, and 293, and then print it out after we made the changes. Then we did the same kind of thing for player two, but Albert Pujols, we put that in there because we call the second constructor or the first overloaded one, which had just two strings, one for first name and one for last name. All right. Then we set or printed out all that information so you could see all of it. All right. Then we manually went in and set the other three fields. Remember, first name was set to Albert. Last name was set to Pujols. All right, we change these so they are now rather than being set again using a set routine, we're doing it the name of the object dot the name of the property. All right, and then we printed it out again so you could see what everything looked like. Then we did the same thing for player three. Remember, with player three, we had passed into that constructor all five of our pieces of data. So we ran that off as well. Then finally, we took everything we'd been doing and we put it inside of that label. All right. Clear at, you know, the same clear and the same, you know, all that stuff is the same. So let me do a file, save all on here. All right. Now I'm going to leave all that stuff in there with all those show messages. But of course, you could always comment them out if you wanted to do so. All right. And while you're all here watching, this was, I think this was it, baseball oop. I think this is the one I just did. One, two, and three. The last one was at three o'clock. Yep. So let's come in here under more oop. Let's do a git bash here. Get an it. A git add dot. A git commit 
minus M will say baseball oop examples done Monday 6 26 2023 okay there's that let's go over and create a repo that's called more oop I'm sorry that's called what is it called baseball oop I'd be pretty surprised if I already had a repo called Baseball Oop. I've got to clean this out because I've got way too many repos with just garbage in them. So, Baseball Oop. There it is. Let me grab that line here. Our Git Remote line. Paste that line in. Okay, it doesn't like something I did, so that's fine. There we go. Lost my cursor. Let's try it again. Okay, let's grab it again and try it again. Copy, maybe I didn't copy the first time, I don't know. Paste. There it is. Double check with a git remote minus V. That's good. Git push minus U origin master. Sit and spin. It shouldn't take long and it didn't. And if I refresh, more oop and underneath it are our Baseball 1, 2, and 3. So the name of the repo will be down here. There it is. Okay. All right. So let's talk about the rest of this week and next week all right we have now finished this so tomorrow tuesday the 27th of june all right that probably won't work so this one will we are going to go in and i am going to lecture on chapter 12 how to create and use classes which starts on page 373 and as you can see it is approximately 48 pages so here it is this chapter presents the basics of creating and using classes in c sharp apps you'll learn how to create classes that use properties methods and constructors which we've already talked about in classes that contain static members, which we have yet to talk about. In addition, in the last 10 pages of the chapter, they will talk about structures, records, and record structs. I will tell you that when you take your pretest and when you take your hands-on test, there will be nothing on structures, there will be nothing on records, there will be nothing on record structs. So the only place you're going to find structures, records, and record structs will be on your written test. <clears throat> so this is what we will do tomorrow all right then on Wednesday it'll the class will be somewhat abbreviated I have an appointment that I forgot about I apologize I'll be gone for a couple hours but I will be back we're only gonna meet from about 8 till 11 so what are we gonna do during that time I'm going to show you right now all right, and that is, wrong button, uh, there it is, right next to it. We are going to build this. This is the Chapter 12 lab. All right, 
and it's called Section 3 Projects, Project 3.1, Create a Basic Calculator. I want you to make this. I've got it done already. Just to show it to you, There's mine. I don't know what I don't know what that is, but that doesn't look good. All right, there it is. And over here, you can see if you look the name of all of my controls. Why isn't that going up? There it is. Up you go. There you go. So I'm going to take a picture of this. Yes, I already had it. I want you to create this interface by Wednesday morning. Notice, label, button, button, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18 buttons of the same size and one button that's bigger. All right? I will give you the sizes. Let's see if I can actually write that down here. So let me see if I go to home here. I want to do that in here. So let me let me go and do this. Let me go back to the code right here. So this label, in fact, the form, do it like that. Form, the size of the form will be. 545 by 520. All right. The label, the label will be four thirty four by forty six. So, 434 by 46. All right. The 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 30, 40, 50, 16, the 18 buttons. That means, in other words, the smaller ones. So, the smaller buttons... The size on those all right the size on these smaller buttons here are 75 by 54 okay so I've got the form I've got the label. Let's come over here to the two bigger buttons. So the two buttons that's this one and this one. These will be looks like 191 by 70. Nope. Well, these aren't the same size. 191 by 70 and 228 by 70. Okay. So the bigger buttons then, 191 by 70, and that'll be the, how about this? We'll say here, back button. So that'll be the back button. The clear button will be, what did we say, 228 by 70.
the 18 buttons, which are the numbers and the symbols, those are 75 by 54. And the equals button, that's this one here. All right. That will be 75 by, by 130. Okay, let me grab all of this. I don't know if what I'm going to do now will work or not. Try it anyway. But two, three, four, five. Of course, I lost the equals button. All right, try that again. Copy that. I'll fix it. You'll you'll have all the dimensions that you're supposed to have for this. I don't want to waste your time by having you watch me flounder. All right. The other one that we will go over then on Wednesday will be the one that's discussed in the chapter. The one that's discussed in the chapter, and that'll be this product maintenance app. It starts on page 390, and it'll be used in chapters... 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16, to my knowledge. All right? So when we do the extra exercise, it says you'll be working with this inventory maintenance app. It's either the inventory maintenance or the product maintenance. All right? We're going to go over it in detail. All right? We'll talk more about this tomorrow. Then on Thursday, on Thursday of this week, you will get your pretest. As always, I will email the pretest out to you by 7 a.m. I will go over the pretest from approximately 8 a.m. until 8.15 a.m. You will take the pretest, and at approximately 10.15 a.m., I will do the pretest for you from scratch. Again, I said this earlier, I'm saying it again. There are no classes Monday, July 3rd. There are no classes Tuesday, July 4th. So after this week, we won't meet until Wednesday the 5th. On that date, on Wednesday, July 5th, we will be going over or taking hot number five, the hands-on test for chapter 12. Then on that Thursday, the 6th, we will be going over chapters 13 and 14. The following week, on about the 10th or whenever that is, we'll do 15 and 16. All right? I'm not going to make any homework due this weekend. I hate giving homework that's due on a holiday weekend, so we'll push this off until sometime next week. All right? As always, if you have any questions on anything, it is your responsibility to email me and let me know. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. All right. With that, then, thanks a lot for listening. I will see you tomorrow, Tuesday, the 27th. Have a good rest of the day. Thanks. Bye.